On day one, I was a dragon god ruling over my 1 million followers. Nobody can withstand my might! Suddenly, my followers all turned on me and started attacking. I tried to make them stop, but they wouldn't listen to me anymore. What's going on? Obey me! No way! We only follow the shadow god now! Just then, the shadow god emerged before me. <laughs> I have influenced your people to obey me now. They no longer believe in you. We'll see about that. We both flew outside, where I was ready to remind my people why I am their ruler. I used my immense power to fly around my challenger at blinding speed, trying to confuse him. I blew my fire, but his shadowy breath attacks pulled me closer, draining my energy. I tried to outmaneuver him, but he hit me with beams of power that seared my wings. Finally, the fight came to a head, and we used our breath powers against each other. Fire versus frost. But somehow, his frozen breath overpowered mine. Despite my efforts, the Shadow God was too powerful. He struck me down, reverting me back to a demigod. I only had 10 hearts. Get him, man! My former followers all came after me. I had no choice but to make a run for it. On day two, I was being chased by the Shadow God's men. Maybe you need a reminder that I'm your leader. I tried to use my godly powers to assert my authority, but I was only able to shoot fire. Oh no! Since they don't believe in me, I've lost my powers! I was no match for the army anymore, so I took to the skies and flew away with my wings. I managed to narrowly escape and found a safe spot to catch my breath. A god is nothing without his followers. If I'm gonna get strong again, I need more mobs to believe in me. Just then, I heard someone crying for help. <laughs> I swooped in to see what the yelling was about and realized that a little coin dragon was being attacked by a bigger mob. Don't worry, I'm coming! I jumped into the fray and began to fight off the beast. Although I only had my fire breath, I was still a demigod, meaning I was stronger than other mobs. I swiped at the hellhound with my claws, but he snapped me quickly with his bite. I blew a wave of fire, slowing him down briefly as he charged. He couldn't take the heat. After a tough fight, I took down the beast and saved the little mob. Well, thank you, great dragon god! I am in your debt! Don't worry, I'm always looking out for my subjects. Well, consider me one of your followers then. I'm Zip! I felt a tingling sensation in my chest like I was a step closer to regaining my strength. I'll have to befriend all of the kingdoms if I want to increase my followers. On day three, Zip and I both set off to find a spot to start our new civilization. I started by building a structure on a cloud in the sky. I made sure it was made of quartz and embellished with accents of gold to represent my status as a god. Once I was finished, I moved onto the surface beneath the cloud and started building a house for Zip. I planned to one day have a massive village below me to house all of my people. The shadow god better watch out! After completing my build, I needed to find some food for Zip and I, so I took to the skies in search of some grub. I spotted a village and landed to ask them for some assistance. Hello, I command thee to give me an offering of wheat seeds. Ha! Why would I do that for a wimpy little demigod? You'll regret that, villager. I will smite thee. I honed in all of my powers and the sky began to grow dark. I was a kind god, but I wasn't afraid to show people what happened when they disrespected me. Die! Ah! Oh, is that it? Kinda feel bad for you now. The villager handed me some food out of pity. Ugh. Mark my words! When my powers return, you will fear me! I took to the skies and noticed one of the Shadow God's followers walking by. I wonder where they're headed. On days four through seven, I followed the goon into a chicken village. Whoa, it's like a KFC. Multiple of them were in the center of the village, worshiping Baraco the Sun God. Is that Shadow Follower planning on taking their followers too? I gotta warn them! I rushed inside of the village and quickly found a Shadow Goon hiding under Baraco's altar. Stop right there! Without thinking, I began to attack the mob. Unluckily for me, they were quick on their feet. Yeah! Stop this demigod! He's jealous of Baraco's power! <gasps> no! I'm trying to help! This guy is evil! He's trying to disgrace Baracko! Get him! The followers didn't care what I said and attacked me anyway. I wanted them to join my cause, so the last thing I planned to do was fight back. I ran around trying to avoid their attacks. When this became too difficult, I flew up into the air. Once I was airborne, I noticed the shadow follower running away. Hey! Stop! On days 8 through 10, I pursued the shadow follower. They were fast, but my wings allowed me to easily keep up. After a lot of traveling, I followed them into a nearby cave. Once inside, they quickly reached a dead end. I'm gonna reveal your true intentions to everyone. Yeah, right. They'd never believe you. Then I'll just have to stop you right now. Oh yeah? Catch! The follower tossed over a cooked chicken, which I instinctively picked up. 
Huh? Before I had any time to react, Barako's followers caught up to us. He's eating our people. Oh, Barako, please save us. Without hesitation, the mystical Barako yelled from outside the cave. You will leave my people alone. <laughs> On days 11 through 14, I came out to face Barako, who came at me with the might of a sun god. Barako yelled a deafening cry, and streams of sunlight started to explode around me. The hot sand made the fight difficult, so I decided to even the odds with my flame breath. He summoned his minions, and they began attacking me and healing him. Hey, not fair! I dive-bombed right into his belly, but he bounced me right off. He used the power of the sun to create a blast of heat, scorching the area. He was powerful, but I couldn't call myself a god if I lost here. I had to use all of my strength to take down Baraka. You're stronger than you look, but I will fight to the death! No, please! This is all a misunderstanding! Just then, I spotted the shadow followers sneaking up behind Baraka. He was going to land a secret killing blow! Look out! I used my abilities to kill the shadow follower where he stood. Everyone celebrated the safety of their leader, and one of the chickens walked up to me. Oh my gosh! That dragon saved our god! I see now you were telling the truth. Thank you. Really? Awesome! Suddenly, I felt a new power surge within me. My strength increased, my scales hardened, and I grew in size. I now had eight additional hearts and the power to hurl fireballs. I was an adult dragon god! I finally have more followers! I'm one step closer to taking out the shadow god! On days 15 through 17, I returned to my base with some of my new chicken followers. I began to do some expanding to the village and built additional housing for all of my new chicken followers to stay in. I also made them an altar so they could continue to worship Baraka as well as myself. Let's share the love! I let the chickens get settled in and flew up to my sky base for some more expansions. I added a royal nest fit with a table in the center to discuss my future plans, and a luxurious landing pad. My little cloud fortress was starting to look like home. Finally, I added a farm to my civilization so we had plenty of food for all of my subjects. As I cultivated my crops, I remembered the villager that mocked me a few days earlier. Time to pay them a little visit. I returned to the village and spotted the villager from the sky above. Hello there! I'm back to smite you! Oh, uh, you're big! Taste my wrath! In a fit of rage, I threw a fireball at the villager. Okay, you're cool! I'm sorry! That's what I thought! We're sorry for mocking you! Our village is willing to move in and serve you! That sounds good to me! I brought the villagers back to my base and got them settled in some houses of their own. This is almost better than our old home! Almost? Well, the people of the north are playing their music way too loud! Don't worry, I'll go check it out for you. On days 18 through 21, I went to investigate the source of the music. When I arrived, I spotted a town of scary looking monsters. Oi, who's this guy? The Dragon God. Turn your music down. Well, the only way we'll do that is if you beat us. In combat? No, a dance off. We moved to the dance floor where all the monsters were showing off their dance moves. The monsters each had their own set of crazy moves. I watched as they spun around and showed me everything they had. <laughs> Be dead. Oh yeah? I did my signature spinning move and began to break dance on the floor. I wasn't only a god, but I was also an amazing dancer. Yo! Whoa! Once I was done, it was clear that I was the winner of the dance-off. Those moves rock. You're a cool god. Consider us your followers. Just then, I gained two more hearts. Nice. Oh, and lower that music, please. With my quest completed, I took to the skies to start searching for more followers. As I scouted, I discovered a wooden beam that was poking out of the ocean. What's that? On days 22 through 25, I landed at the shore of the ocean to prepare for my journey. Dragons can't breathe underwater. Good thing I'm a god. I used my godly abilities to transform into an entirely different type of dragon. My lungs turned into gills and I gained some fins to help me navigate the ocean. I was now a water dragon. I hopped into the water and swam towards the wooden structure. When I arrived, I discovered it was a shipwreck that was housing a civilization of dolphins, but they didn't seem to be doing well. They look hungry. I wonder what happened. Suddenly, a dolphin came barreling towards me. Give me your food or else. What? They began to attack me with everything they had. Before I could blast them off though, the dolphin's leader arrived. Enough! <laughs> the troublesome dolphin swam off, leaving me alone with the leader. What was that about? 
I'm sorry, mighty god. My people are starving, and our goddess is nowhere to be seen. I can help you find her. If you manage to do so, then we would be honored to follow you too. Please take this map to her temple. But be warned, the journey is a treacherous one. You can count on me. On days 26 through 28, I began to follow the map I got from the dolphin leader, when out of nowhere, a trident nearly hit me. I looked around and discovered a group of drowned were attacking me. I'll make you pay for that! The drowned began to swarm with throwing tridents, but they were no match for my reawakened lightning powers. The electricity surged through them in the water, totally obliterating them. Their metal tridents worked against them, conducting more electricity and frying them to a crisp. It didn't take long for the mobs to succumb to my crushing powers. Normal mobs don't stand a chance against a god. I kept moving until finally arriving at the temple, but it seemed as if nobody was around. Just then, another trident flew by me. To my surprise, it wasn't from a drown, but a trident tyrant. Get back here! I chased after them as quickly as I could, but as I turned a corner, I was face to face with the sea goddess instead. Oh, thank goodness! I found you! You okay? The sea goddess attacked me with her massive jaws. I did my best to avoid the sea goddess's onslaught. I wasn't sure what had come over her. She's not acting like herself. Something is wrong. Each snap from her jaws did massive damage. I had no choice but to fight for my life. The goddess chomped into me relentlessly. I tried to keep her at bay with my lightning, but she brushed it off like it was nothing. I tried using my spin attack, but she dodged narrowly. My thunder strikes only slowed her down for a second before she came right back at me with full force. Despite my efforts, she was far more powerful than the others I had faced. I wasn't gonna win. Just then, I spotted the Triton Tyrant looming in a hiding spot. What are you doing here? Drat, the Shadow God will be angry with me. Did you say Shadow God? You're going down. I knew he was up to no good, so I changed my approach. I attacked the Triton Tyrant and managed to take him out. Just after the tyrant fell, the sea goddess snapped out of her rage. What happened? That entity must have been influencing you. Your people need help. Say no more. We returned to the dolphin village and the sun goddess gave all of her followers the miracle of food. Thank you, dragon god. We will follow you loyally. Suddenly, I began to transform. I gained 10 more hearts. Thank you all for your support. I'll make sure the shadow god pays for this. On days 33 through 35, I returned to the shore and transformed back into my land form. To my surprise, I had a new appearance. I look a bit different now. It must be because of my new dolphin followers. I flew back to the base and decided to get to work on some areas for my new subjects. I dug out a lake and added some waterfalls to give it an aquatic feeling. To round out the dolphins area, I added a shrine to the sea goddess so they could worship her as well. After I was done with this, I built an altar for my followers to present me offerings. To my surprise, they were all eager to hand me what they had. There you go! Thanks! For you! I appreciate it! Thank you, sir! Now this is an offering! I put on the armor and instantly felt more powerful than before. No one would dare defy me now! Just then, I spotted one of my other villagers wandering away from the base. He looks like he's up to no good. I tailed behind my follower to discover he was headed towards a shadow god temple. What business does he have with that guy? I found a hiding spot and watched as he approached my nemesis. Do you have any new intel for me? Yes, the dolphins just joined up with the dragon god. How unfortunate. Oh well, he doesn't stand a chance against me. I stepped out to intimidate them. Stop right there! Fool! You let him right to me! The Shadow God struck down the traitor, then lunged at me. The Shadow God breathed his powerful frost breath at me, trying to freeze me midair. I retaliated with my flame breath and fire bolts to keep things nice and toasty. When he realized my flames were too hot, the God fired beams of light at me as well as dark matter to try and end me right then and there. We soared through the skies, dodging and weaving each other's attacks, but even I couldn't avoid all of his moves. Whenever he managed to hit me, it dealt loads of damage. Despite my growing numbers, I still wasn't strong enough to defeat the Shadow God. You're not the only one gaining new followers. 
Stay in your place, demigod! He took off to the skies, and I swore revenge. I need to befriend the remaining kingdoms before he gets even stronger. On days 40 through 43, I knew that the Shadow God's power was spiraling out of control. I need to reach out to subjects beyond just the overworld. I built myself a nether portal and traveled inside. When I arrived in the nether, I was suddenly bombarded with tons of mobs. The Strider military was waiting for me. Be gone! Nobody else is hurting our village! What happened? A horrible god came and destroyed our home! Then I'll take care of this! I began to fly around the nether in search of the angry god. After a while, I managed to find him holed up in a golden cave. Your rampage ends here! You're just a demigod. Don't make me laugh. The god unleashed his fiery breath and blasted me out of the cavern. Ow! I'm gonna have to get stronger and put him in his place! On days 44 through 46, I returned to the Striders and told them what had happened. If it's true you will help eliminate the beast, then we will put our trust in you. I began to train up with the Striders. They had me undergo numerous tests, including flying through rings. All of it was a piece of cake for me. I managed to only gain two more hearts. I guess since I'm a god, traditional training doesn't work as well. Gain more followers then. The Piglin are in the Bastion Remnant. I did as I was told and flew over to the Piglins. I touched down over their civilization and demanded their loyalty. Hello, mortals. Bow to your new god. Do you have some gold? We don't take kindly to goldless deities. Oh, one sec. I quickly struck down one of the bystanders and he dropped a gold ingot. How about that? Eh, good enough. I now had the power of the piglins on my side. With my big boost and followers, I transformed, changing my dragon scales into a red, lava-resistant form and even gained 10 more hearts. That did the trick! Time to take out the nether god! On days 47 through 50, I confronted the nasty nether god once again. Come out and face me! The nether god emerged from his den and looked down onto me. Looks like you have more followers, but not as much as me. We'll see about that. The nether god's blue fire was super hot. The ceiling was low and the lava was crazy hot as well. I had to be careful not to fall in. I struck him with my cobalt sword, dealing massive damage. The battle was fierce and the heat was intense. He kept flying over me, making it hard to land any clean hits. I felt like I was flying in circles. I knew I couldn't keep this up, so I touched back down into the cave to fight on even footing. The nether god landed inside and began to slash at me with his powerful claws. Each hit he managed to land did loads of damage so I retaliated with my fire breath. We breathed flames at each other, but thanks to my latest transformation, my scales were fireproof. I used my armored body to my advantage and overwhelmed the god with my attacks. My new followers gave me the strength I needed to overcome the nether god. I had him cowering in his cave. I yield. You're too powerful. Have mercy on me. Only if you promise to give the Striders their home back in my name. Yes, of course. I needed the lava to forge my gold. It's only fair if I restore it. Good. Uh, got anything cool that I can use to beat the Shadow God? You're going against the Shadow God? You're crazy. But since you were able to take me down, it might be possible. Here, take this. The Nether God gave me the royal red leggings and boots. I put it on and felt like I could take on the world. I look sick. I flew back to the Striders and told them the good news. They were all overjoyed. Thank you, Dragon God. You have our undying support. The Shadow God better watch out now. On days 51 through 54, I returned to my home in the overworld and started expansion of my base to house my new followers. I carved out a small cave protected from the sun and filled it with lava so my Strider crew could feel right at home. I opened a nether portal for them so they could travel back and forth between the worlds, and even gave them a shrine to the nether god, since he was the one still keeping the nether warm. In the center of town, I added a message box so that any of my followers could submit requests for anything they needed. Lastly, I did some renovation on my own cloud base, adding more moats of gold. I even started my own hoard of treasure. After the building was done, I checked my town's message box to see what kind of requests my followers had. Dear Dragon God, we need more food. The fields are dry. No sweat. This'll be easy. I headed to the farm plot and re the fields with wheat. Now it's time for some water. I used my godly powers to perform a miracle. I summoned rain, causing the seeds to spring to life, and the wheat grew instantly. My followers cheered and rang out with applause. Let's go! Thank you, thank you! You're all too kind! Wow, Dragon God! You're amazing! Zip, we're buddies! You can just call me Max! Okay! So, how's it going? Do you have any requests, follower number one? Actually, I do. Not for me, but for my friend Spyro who needs some help looking for gems. Gems? 
Like treasure gems? Yeah, he's a natural treasure hunter. He's been everywhere looking for treasure, even the end. The end? Hey, I need to go there too. Maybe if I help him out, he can help me find a portal. Okay, Zip, I'll help your friend Spyro out. Yay! On days 55 through 57, I flew around looking for Spyro. Zip gave me a good idea as to where he might be. As I flew overhead, I saw a small purple dragon digging holes in a Badlands biome. Hey, are you Spyro? That's me. My friend Zip said you needed help looking for gems? Yep, magic gems. That'll get me home. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not from around here. Yeah, you are pretty small for a dragon. What did you say? Nothing. Uh, so if I help you find these gems, do you think you can help me out? Sure thing, whatever you need. Spyro and I dug around in the Badlands for a while. Just as I was ready to give up, a hole opened up underneath us and we fell through. We landed in a cavern, and when we looked around, there were diamonds everywhere. Jackpot, this is more than enough. Let's grab them. These are diamonds, Spyro, not gems. Just grab them, this is what we need. I started to mine one of the diamonds, but when I did, a bunch of gem monsters emerged from behind us. Oh no, gem monsters. Come on, let's take them down. These gems are ours. Spyro and I fought the gem monsters together. The gem monsters were strong, but our fire was hot enough to make them molten. They may have thought they had strength in numbers, but I had strength in followers. Spyro's height worked to his advantage as he bit and slashed at the ankles of the monsters. With my last breath of flames, I melted the monsters into a fiery puddle. After a hard battle, we took down the gem monsters and claimed our prize. Wow, these gem monsters have even more gems. Thanks for the help, stranger. Now, what can I help you with? Do you know where I can find an ender portal? An ender portal? Like the black spacey looking one? Yeah, that's the one. I remember where that is. Follow me. Spyro took his bag of gems and led us out of the cavern. On days 58 through 61, I arrived at the end portal with Spyro. Here it is. I gotta go now, but good luck with your journey to becoming the dragon god again. Thanks, Spyro. See ya. After saying goodbye to Spyro, I jumped through the portal and made it to the end city. But to my surprise, the whole place was on fire. What's going on? Just then, the ender dragon flew over my head. Hear me now, subjects! You are now not only under my rule, but the Shadow Gods as well. Kneel before my double power! Oh no! I gotta help these Endermen evacuate the city! The Ender Dragon's gone mad! The Ender Dragon was too busy destroying the area to notice me gathering all the Endermen to a secure location. Come on, this way! I'm taking you to a safe spot! Just as I got the last of the Endermen to safety, the Ender Dragon spotted me. Those are my followers, fool! Stop right there! The Ender Dragon charged right at me. I had to give the Enderman more time to escape, so I charged right back at her. On days 62 through 64, I battled the Ender Dragon to save the Enderman. We both took to the skies to test our godly strength. We were similarly matched, but he managed to outmatch my power with devastating flame breath. I fought it out as long as I could, but I quickly realized I wasn't going to win this one. Despite my new strength, I was too weak to continue. I had no choice but to run. Get back here, coward! I managed to escape and hide in the cave with the Enderman. Hey, you saved us. We want to take out the Ender Dragon. He's been an evil tyrant even before teaming up with the Shadow God. Can you help us out? Of course. With all your guys' help, that should give me enough strength to take him down. The Enderman gave me a list of items to gather to better equip them for battle. Ender carrots, chorus fruit, and end rods. Okay, I'll go find these and be right back. I started out searching for ender carrots. Farther from the city, I stumbled upon an end farmer. Hey farmer, do you happen to have any end carrots? We're gonna overthrow the ender dragon. Overthrow the ender dragon? That's great! She stinks anyway. There you go. Just like that, the farmer dropped me tons of ender carrots for the cause. Thanks a bunch, I'll put these to good use. Next, I went around chopping down chorus trees, trying to get as many as possible. Lastly, I needed some end rods, so I snuck back into the city buildings to collect some. The fire was dangerous, but I made it through safely. I returned to the Endermen and gave them everything they asked for. This is perfect. The Ender Dragon won't know what hit him. As thanks, the Enderman gave me a new piece of armor to add to my set. Cool! This will definitely aid me in battle. We made it as an offering to placate the Ender Dragon, but he laughed in our faces when we showed it to him. It's better you have it. I'll put it to good use. On days 65 through 68, I arrived with my Ender Army at the Ender Dragon's lair. It wasn't long before the oversized lizard spotted us. What's this? A rebellion? That's right! And we're gonna take you down! I'd like to see you try! 
The two of us charged in head on and began to fight it out. I took to the skies and battled the Ender Dragon from above. My army of Endermen stayed close by and shot projectiles from the ground. I used my Dragon Breath and my Blue Geode Sword to dwindle down his health. He then retaliated by using fire attacks of his own. His flames were so powerful that they dealt damage over time, bringing me close to death. I couldn't let the Enderman down, so I kept fighting with all of my might. Despite our efforts, the Ender Dragon continued to regenerate health from the pillars. We were gonna lose at this rate. I had to change my approach. So while my Enderman army had the Ender Dragon distracted, I flew to the pillars and destroyed every crystal with my fire attacks. Soon, they were all blown to smithereens, and the Ender Dragon and I were on a level playing field. I returned to the battle and used everything I had to finish off the beast. After one final blow, I took down the corrupt leader and liberated the Endermen from their tyranny. We might have defeated the evil Ender Dragon, but our home is destroyed. Where will we go? You can all stay with me in my base. I can keep you safe from the Shadow God there. That sounds great. We will follow you, O oh Great Dragon God. The new influx of followers caused me to gain even more strength, and I now had a total of 50 hearts. My body once again underwent a transformation, turning me into a shadowy purple color like an Enderman. I tested out my new power and realized my flames had grown so hot they were now purple. One step closer to defeating the Shadow God. On days 69 through 72, I made the trip back to the overworld with all of my new followers. I began expanding the base, starting with the tower fit for the Enderman people. Now they have a great view of the village and the overworld. I also built an altar to commemorate the fight against the Ender Dragon. My base needed some more godly touches, so I added another layer on top with a few stairs surrounding my sky build. Suddenly, I heard a scream from below. What's going on down there? I swooped down to meet face to face with the Shadow God. I had to protect my people. So, you've killed the Ender Dragon and taken the Enderman under your wing too. Unacceptable. These people have agreed to follow me. Leave now or face the consequences. I'll leave, but not without taking a few of your followers first. The Shadow God turned to a crowd of my followers and with his power made them all sink into the ground. Hey, what did you do? <laughs> Your followers are now mine. Good luck getting them back. The Shadow God flew away and I immediately gave chase. On days 73 through 75, I soared through the sky as fast as I could to chase the Shadow God. Without warning, he turned around and shot a shadowy sphere at me. It hit me dead on and took away my wings. Ah! Lucky for me, I had the water below to cushion my fall. Phew, that was close. How did he do that? I couldn't stop now. Even without my wings, I was determined to find my stolen followers. They needed my help. As I swam ashore, an armored knight stopped me in my tracks. Ah, a dragon. You will be a great addition to the feast. Feast? I'm a god. You should be bowing before me. Ah, sure. You don't even have wings. You're barely a dragon at all. Prepare to be dinner. The knight slashed at me with his powerful sword and tried to take me down quickly. Unfortunately for him, I was wearing full armor, which protected me from his attacks. I slashed back with my own geode blade. The sound of our weapons clashing filled the battlefield, but his heavy armor also protected him from my attacks. I decided to use my new ender flames to melt through his defenses by force. In combination with my other fire attacks, I weakened the knight bit by bit. After a while, I saw an opening in his armor and breathed my fiery breath once more. He could no longer withstand my attacks and began to crumble to my power as a god. I took out the overconfident knight easily. Woohoo! Upon his death, he dropped a strange map titled Grand Feast. Was this what he was talking about? Huh, this might be worth checking out. I followed the map all the way to the location of the feast when I spotted some of my followers in a cage. What the? Before I could do anything, someone bonked me on the head and I was out cold. On days 76 through 79, I woke up to find myself in the same cage that all of my followers were in. Outside, the head guard was speaking to his men. Hey, great work today. Tomorrow we will feast on the foolish dragon god and his followers. What? Huzzah! All of the men left, leaving me alone in the cage with my followers. Are you guys okay? What was that guy talking about? After the shadow god captured us, he sent us here to be eaten. Eaten? Why would he do that? Since his followers were becoming disloyal, he figured eating them would be a fitting punishment to ensure no one ever leaves. We would be forever trapped in his belly. That's sick. Let's find a way out of here. I took a deep breath in and exhaled, using my new Ender Breath power to melt the bars and let all my followers escape. We're free. 
Thank you, Dragon God. Are you coming with us? I'm gonna stay back and investigate. You guys go on ahead. My followers ran to safety, and I stooped around the massive table to try and find out more about the Shadow God's plans. As I scanned the scraps of the table, I managed to find a note left by one of the knights. I picked it up and took a look inside. The civilization in the sky is real. We must report to the Shadow God so he can gain more followers. A civilization in the sky? If I can find this city, I can really grow my kingdom. Stop right there. Just then, a group of guards arrived. Nowhere to run, Dragon God. Let's get you back in that cage. No way! I'm not gonna be anyone's dinner! I had faced one of them before, but now that I was up against an army, things were a lot more challenging. The horde of knights swang at me with their blades, but I knew that my sword wouldn't be enough to pierce through their armor. I used my purple flames to melt through their numbers and keep them at bay. The knights teleported at me trying to get in close, but I pushed them off of me with my geode sword. One by one, they began to succumb to my power. Despite their numbers, I took out the group of guards. All of a sudden, I felt my wings grow back. Perfect timing. Now I can fly out of here. On days 80 through 83, I flew through the world asking various mobs for information about the sky civilization. In the distance, I spotted a strange tower with an old wizard watching me from the top. I flew in closer to talk to the old wizard. Hey, why are you looking at me like that? Ah, young one. I've seen a place, a hidden place where dragons like you roam freely in the skies. Well, that's convenient. Where is this place? Hmm, I don't remember. Perhaps some food would help jog my memory. I offered him some of my food I had, but he rejected it. No thank you. I only eat the fruit of the golden apple tree. Ah, <sighs> fine. I guess I'll go find you a golden apple. I flew around until I spotted a golden apple tree, but it was being guarded by an overworld drake. With no other option, I charged into battle. The drake let out a ferocious roar that caused the ground to tremble beneath us. He charged me with his powerful horns and bashed into me to deal big damage. Luckily, I was protected by my armor, otherwise I would have been badly hurt. I melted through his scales with my godly dragon breath while trying to keep my distance so he couldn't reach me with his claws. This went on for a while, but I was beginning to overpower the beast. After a difficult fight, I managed to slay the beast. Now that the monster was gone, I picked a few apples from the tree and flew back to the wizard. I gave the golden apples to the wizard and he ate them up quickly. Do you remember me now? Ah, uh, yes. You see, it was a rather mundane Tuesday afternoon, I think. Or was it Wednesday? No, it was definitely a Tuesday. Go on. Anyways, I was wandering through the desert and began admiring a particularly fascinating cactus. You know, the ones with those spiky bits. When suddenly a dragon egg fell from the sky and landed right on my noggin. The desert! That's where I'll have to go next. I flew off, leaving the old wizard to ramble to himself. It was quite the sensation. Though not particularly remarkable, all things considered. On days 84 through 86, I flew to the desert the old wizard told me about. After some searching, I found a sky dragon on the ground. Greetings, fellow dragon. Please, listen to our plight. An evil entity controlled by the Shadow God himself has taken over our dear leader's sky temple. And what's worse, they've taken him captive. Can you help us, brave dragon? That's what I'm here for. The dragon started cheering and applauding. I was gonna save their leader. So where do I go? Just go straight up. The Sky Temple isn't hard to miss. Sounds easy enough. I left the dragon and began flying straight up into the sky. There, I found a giant floating island being corrupted by the entity. Uh oh. This guy's bad news. On days 87 through 89, I began to investigate the Sky Temple for the trapped leader. As I navigated the temple, I was suddenly ambushed by a horde of Naga. The Nagas were skilled flyers like me and spun at me with a powerful spinning move. I tried to retaliate with my fire attacks, but the rain made it impossible to use. Luckily, my purple breath was hot enough to withstand the rain. I went in close with my blue geode sword and began to slash the Nagas up close and personal. They dug into me with their powerful teeth and spat green projectiles at me to deal loads of damage. Unfortunately for them, they were not able to withstand the power of a dragon god. I managed to take out the goons and continued searching the temple. After a while, I stumbled across the sky dragon leader who was being held captive in a cage. Don't worry, I'll blast you out of here with my godly fire breath. I tried to scorch through the bars, but nothing happened. Wait, what? These bars have been reinforced to withstand any manner of magical interference. The only way through is to catch the entity who holds the key. Just then, a tiny player holding a key scurried by. There he is! Get him! I did as I was told and zigzagged through the Sky Temple after the key. 
I hurried into the little player, ran into a jungle golem. Look what we have here. Trying to free the Sky Dragon's leader, I see. That's right. Hand over the key. You'll have to get through me first. The Shadow God won't be happy if you get these followers in your hands. The jungle golem picked up the key and charged at me. He went at me with his fists, trying to beat me down with brute force. Now that I was indoors, I was able to use my fire abilities again. I began to burn through the golem's defenses and tried to overwhelm him with the fury of my flames. The jungle golem retaliated with powerful explosive projectiles. Thankfully, my armor protected me and I continued wearing him down bit by bit. Once he was weak, I finally unleashed my purple flames and dealt the finishing blow. After he went down, I claimed the key. Time to gain some new followers. On days 90 through 92, the key worked and the bars of the cage disappeared. Thank you, Dragon God. Your perseverance has saved myself and our people from that wicked Dragon God's tyranny. No problem. Saving people is kind of my specialty. What will you do now? We'll have to find a way to continue living in peace. But with all this corruption of our land, I don't believe it's possible. You guys can stay with me. I tossed over a map to my base so we could all meet up there later. Your kindness will not be in vain. My people and I will honor you, great dragon god. Suddenly, I felt a huge surge in my follower count. My body underwent another transformation. I grew bigger and more powerful, and my scales glistened in gold. I now had the power to control the sun and regenerate. This is it! My strength has returned! I can finally defeat the Shadow God! On days 93 through 95, I returned to the base to find the Shadow God looming over. What do you want? I'm strong enough to take you out right now! I've heard that the Sky Dragons were coming here. I've come to claim my new men. You can't force people to follow you! That's no way to be a god! We'll see about that! The Shadow God shot a powerful attack of darkness at my followers. I couldn't let him hurt them, so I intercepted the attack, causing me to take massive damage. You're sacrificing yourself for mortals? Ha! You're a fool! This is where you fall! The Shadow God shot another attack, trying to take me out while I was weak, but Zip protected me before I was hit! Zip, no! The projectile caused Zip to be corrupted by the Shadow God. He now followed him! Let him go! If you want your little friend back, then come and get him! The two of them vanished from my base. He's gone too far! I'm gonna save my first follower no matter what! On days 96 through 98, I began to work on the final preparations I needed to do before facing the Shadow God. I started by building an area for the Sky Dragons to call their own. I made sure it was perfectly fit for them and reminiscent of their original home. Next, I did the finishing touches on my temple. I added arches above the top platform to give the base a more elegant look. I also added my very own throne that I could sit in as I watched over my followers. With that, my Dragon God base was completed. Perfect! Once I was finished, one of the Sky Dragons landed at my base. Come with me, I want to show you something. I followed them down to the surface and realized my people had thrown me a festival in my honor. Surprise! Enjoy the festivities. Whoa, this is awesome! I began to explore all the different things my followers had prepared. Among all of the people celebrating was a massive golden dragon statue surrounded by a ton of offerings. I dug through the offerings and found a potion of void resistance that would be useful in my journey ahead. This is amazing! Thank you all! I'm only this powerful now because of you. Go save Zip! I will! With my mind made up, I took to the sky and headed towards the Shadow God's fortress. On day 99, I returned to my old kingdom to find the entire place transformed. The blocks had changed and the air felt heavy. This place has a bad vibe to it now. Just then, a horde of my old followers confronted me. You're the god we abandoned! Leave these lands! The Shadow God is corrupting you! He only wants to eat you for more power! Despite my pleas, they didn't listen. The corruption took over and caused them to transform. They all began to attack me! In their new form, they were much stronger, but I didn't want to hurt them. I went easy on them, using mostly my sword to fend them off. They didn't stand a chance against my godly powers, but I was able to knock some sense into them. They all turned back to normal. Ugh, my head! Great Dragon God! Is that you? Yeah! I quickly explained what had happened and how they were being controlled by the Shadow God. He wanted to eat us? Don't worry, we follow you now! With my followers back to normal, I took down my potion of void resistance and continued deeper inside the castle. On day 100, I broke into the fortress to find the Shadow God waiting for me. Beside him was my friend Zip, trapped in a cage. I see you managed to get past my guard, but that doesn't matter. I'll defeat you just like I did on day one. I'm stronger than you think. Let my friend go. Never! He began to attack me and the fight of the gods began. 
we flew out of the castle and fought in the sky. Dragon versus dragon. We were both skilled fighters and shot powerful attacks at each other. The shadow god used his void attack in combination with a powerful laser. Although we could both fly, I was quicker than he was. I dodged his projectiles and retaliated with my fire powers. I used them to burn through his scales, while my potion of void resistance protected me from his dark attacks. In combination with my hot purple flames, I bombarded the god so quickly that he couldn't keep up. He was getting confused. I used this to my advantage and went in close with my blue geode sword to slash him down. It was anyone's game, but I finally managed to defeat the shadow god. I did it! I freed Zip from his prison, and now once again ruled over my domain. I'm the mightiest dragon god! Rah!